But next we do have the OVO Sweatshop. I feel like this one's gonna be interesting because I don't I, I don't know what they mean by Drake that. Drake is like, by far the most. I don't know if it's talking about like just his brand in general or like the music for like Ghost Riders. Like I don't know, man. He might have a lot of shops. You feel me? Drake is by far the most successful hip hop and musical artist of our time and has achieved numbers that rival Michael Jackson, the Beatles, and Taylor Swift. But the ultimate test of such greatness is the ability to pass success onto the next generation of artists, guiding them through the treacherous music industry where a far majority of up and coming artists fail. Because not only does it extend one's legacy past their career, but it also proves that their accomplishments were not just luck. A common trend that successful artists have done for years in the music industry is to create their own label, essentially repeating the process they once went through just with higher stakes so drake created his own label however can we really say there is anyone truly notable on drake's ovo sound label that has been successful enough to compare to him in the slight i'm not gonna lie i did not know drake even had like a label i should have known but like like yeah i know he got like an actual shop and shit like that i actually seen one of the stores before their clothes expensive you feel me but like i didn't know he actually had a label with artists like that's interesting. I wonder if anybody actually landed any songs or anything I heard. Lightest, given his level of commercial success and connections, shouldn't it be easier for him to pass the torch to his artists, or is he holding them back on purpose to eliminate competition from his home city of Toronto that breeds new and fresh sounds? Perhaps he just doesn't have time to devote to his artist's careers while he remains supreme. Today, we find out. Drake was actually in these artists' shoes only a decade ago. He was signed a Cash Money, Young Money Records joint venture led by Lil Wayne and Birdman alongside Nicki Minaj, Tyga, and other soon-to-be superstars. But he individually was branded as the next rapper to take over Lil Wayne's spot as the best rapper alive. Lil Wayne took Drake under his wing, utilizing all the connections and pull he had in the industry to spotlight his music to the world. Not to mention, jumping hey, on really multiple did. tracks as a feature right after signing. That's all he really needed the cosign and years later drake has obviously done lil wayne justice with the risk he took on him drake's contract with young money records would expire and he would have to decide if he wanted to re-sign sign to an entirely new label for an exorbitant amount of money or start his own label because while his relationship with lil wayne was still intact wayne and birdman's relationship was in shambles for years the two disputed over how much money lil wayne was owed from his royalties by the end resulting in a 51 million dollar lawsuit and hiatus from releasing music since lil wayne didn't want to give birdman a dime more than he already took as a witness damn i remember that case bro that shit was so like crazy bro i'm honestly surprised like with those type of high profile cases like no one got hurt bro because you got people like diddy out there just fucking like hurt people just cuz bro <laughs> but Lil Wayne and Birdman over here fighting over like real shit. I'm pretty sure like it was like it was, it was really like about some deep shit besides just money. But I don't know, man. That shit was wild. I remember hearing all the stories. Witness of it all. Drake wanted no part in anything similar affecting his own career. So in 2012, long before he submitted enough projects to fulfill his end of the current record deal, Drake founded OVO Sound, an abbreviation for October's very own, with two other founding members his sound engineer and producer, Forty, and manager, Oliver L. Khatib. His label was a joint venture under the Universal Music umbrella, specifically with Republic Records, and intended to focus on budding talent in the Toronto area, where Drake was from. Since, the label has signed a variety of talents such as Party Next Door, Smiley, oh, okay. Majid Jordan, T-Minus, Boy Wanda, and more importantly, himself. Starting in the 2019, boy. after the- So Party Next Door, okay, I, I didn't know that was part of OVO, okay. So that now I, I do know one artist that's under them besides Drake himself. I did not know there was a like before. If you're just joining, I didn't know there was like I didn't know he had his own label. So it's that it's a nice little history lesson to Drake too because I, I really don't know everything about him. But it's, it's I guess it's nice to be educated. But Party Next Door is one of his artists. That's one of his uh more well known I guess for me. I don't know if y'all heard of the other guys. Let let me know you know in the chat and comments whatever. But I ain't heard of them. Sorry. The release of his album Scorpion finished off his contract with Cash Money. Drake just re-upped with uh, Warner Music group with ovo sound that's his button always was so intense first of all it was always out. interesting to me that he saw what the fuck was going on in cash money and he says i don't want a ymcmb part two right. i don't want a young money part two i don't want my own label over somewhere disconnected from birdman in this whole now, system drake being signed to his own label is not entirely uncommon j cole kendrick lamar and travis scott to name a few 
also release music under their own respective record labels. However, in their cases, they act and are treated like label owners since they actually have a large involvement in the creative process and promotion of the artists they signed, in some cases, above their own Not solo Travis careers. Stott, though, On bro. the other hand, Drake has run into controversy. Hey, bro, if you ain't heard of Travis Stott, bro, he's a bad manager for them, bro. I, I saw a little exposure video on him, bro. Like, I don't know, might have to rewatch it for y'all one day, but hey, that boy ain't too good with them artists, bro. Just look up, uh, if you don't know, look at the story of uh, the rapper Fado, and like check out check out Fado, bro. I'll tell you everything you know about how Travis handles all that, cause he is not good with the the label, bro regarding his record label since he rarely or at least ineffectively promotes his label signees despite being the top selling artist in the world unlike his predecessor Lil Wayne in fact various signees of OVO have spoken out against Drake and his lack Ooh. of support for their careers some of which even left the label entirely so with hey, that, that's, that's all the Kendrick's intel right there all them niggas that were there bro they seen everything they're like yeah hey Kendrick let me tell you something bro that those are the dudes that exposed Drake bro being said the question that comes to mind is, why and how does Drake run a major record label if he's not really fulfilling his role of taking their careers to the next level? The answer is darker than you may think. The OVO sweatshop is a term that surfaced from various Reddit posts and coined by DJ Academics in his Twitch live streams and past talk show Everyday Struggle. The conspiracy describes how Drake allegedly exploits and or neglects the artist in his OVO sound label in order to maintain his status in the industry. Now, obviously, his business may not be as poor of working conditions as a literal sweatshop but the term caught on due to how OVO signees would allegedly sacrifice their own careers to write and produce for Drake later on whereas oh, other artists run music labels such as Young Thug's YSL proudly promote and collaborate with his artists that Gunna Gunna looks so as different as back possible. then bro not to mention <laughs> Thug's efforts to help Gunna surpass his own success for the betterment of both parties Playboy Cardi may not be actively advertising his artists in the same way yet still draws immense attention towards them by associating them with his own brand and label Opium and because of this Ken Carson and Destroy Lonely are undoubtedly among the top upcoming artists in the current generation as That's for Travis true. Scott he names. secretly featured Don Tolliver within his highly anticipated album Astro World in turn sparking curiosity that's like the only guy Travis really brought up for real, and launching bro. his career to mainstream attention in a matter of months. The same definitely cannot be said for Drake's OVO Sounds roster, as there is not a single artist that can be deemed mainstream in the slightest. Some of them even being, dare I say, irrelevant. People, I want them yeah, to about go say, fucking I never do what every them. other label does, which is take some of the millions of dollars they've made and go hire somebody to pay attention to every act signed to OVO. So and make sure that there's some more attention paid when they're dropping a project party next door was ovo's first official signee as a vocalist and producer pnd was probably the artist who has had the most success as a drake signee garnering a cult-like fan base in the r&b genre however he has still always been seen as an underdog in comparison to drake and many of his fans believe that he could have reached mainstream success if he never signed to ovo and while pnd and it's drake have true. collaborated on a few occasions as artists on the same track he is also known to be another one of drake's frequent songwriters like quentin miller such as mega hit work featuring Rihanna. Now, who knows if the song would have charted Damn, really? nearly as high or at all if he kept it to himself, but at least he would have had the chance at glory that Drake received time and time again. I Love McConan is the artist behind oh, the 2015 yeah. hit song Tuesday. And while it is true that Drake hopped on the remake, exploding the song even further, the solo track with just McConan had already been an undeniable success without him. Regardless, somehow Drake finagled his way into splitting the royalties on the solo record as well, not Damn, on just really? the remix. Perhaps the deal McConan Conan struck with OVO at the time felt more favorable, but according to him, as soon as the hype from the song MSM, died down, bro? so too did Drake's interest in his career, even dropping him years later without much promotion or music to speak of. An interviewer from Variety asked McConan concerning Tuesday, which Drake released as a remix, it's yours and OVO's biggest hit. You said in 2017 that they needed a hot song. That's it. Do you still believe that? McConan says, I mean, I don't know. I haven't talked to these people in years. Nobody's ever reached out to me, but that seems as if that was the reason. For me looking back and people telling me, they knew that I had the new wave, a new sound starting up, and they jumped on that to further their own wave. They didn't want to sustain and support me, only themselves. Besides, I only met Drake three times. We spoke maybe five times, never about my career, just about getting stuff done. McCone hey bro, don't mind me, I was locked into that shit bro, I was listening like a motherfucker. 
But this I love I love Matona shit was crazy, bro. I do remember like hearing the stories about that shit too, bro. Drake did him so dirty, <laughs> and over his own song too, bro. Like it's man, Drake dirty for real, bro. Be careful out there if you you're like an upcoming artist, bro. Be careful. On his statements in 2021 only strengthened suspicions of Drake's sweatshop operation at OVO. I mean, what label owner, or worse yet, fellow collaborator on the same track with the utmost control of another's career would treat them like that? And with Drake's reputation for Billboard hits every year, it would make sense that he and his managers would capitalize off an already proven song like Tuesday by any means. And it That's didn't true. help that when I Love McConan wanted to finally release an album under his new label, OVO, Drake failed to be involved in any of the creative process, let alone yes, promote wow, it in the slightest. McConan further details his frustration with Drake and his label to Fader. This one I got signed. He's all in my face telling me, you one of the greatest songwriters ever, da da da. Just blowing me up, bro. And I'm the little kid from tragedy right now. You can see it. It was written all over my face. I'm depressed as fuck. And then when I'm like, can y'all tweet out my mixtape? Can I get a feature? Can I get production? No, no, no. So I'm just sitting over here in prison. Am I in prison? So maybe OVO sweatshop Damn, wasn't bro. harsh enough of a term with how Drake treated I Love McConan. Because in retrospect, all Drake really did for his career was boost his song Tuesday to number 12 on Billboard, meanwhile taking half or more of the earnings from the remix and the original song. Not to mention, steal the sound and wave McConan created for himself as an independent artist to further his own career. Then drop him as soon as his name lost relevance from the lack of promotion that Drake provided. Drake just might be an evil genius. Quentin Miller is a ghostwriter and is mainly known for being involved in the largest blemish to Drake's career. I heard his name so many times least, when Drake has evolved. However, before this, he was very much the opposite. Still working in the shadows, no one on the outside even knew Quentin was ghostwriting for some of Drake's hit songs. His controversy escalated with the public feud between Drake and Meek hey, Mill in 2015. Hold on, bro. Oh, bro was ghostwriting for yeah, some of that. Drake's hit songs. His controversy escalated with the public His what, bro? His controversy, bro? That's what I'm here. Feud bro. between Drake and Meek Mill in 2015. Meek Mill pressed Drake after they collaborated on Rico, inquiring if the lyrics were about his current girlfriend at the time, Nicki Minaj, whom Drake has also had a long-term friendship with. But after finding out Drake didn't even write the lyrics to the song, Meek went ballistic and publicly called him out in the process, exposing the actual writer behind the verse, Quentin Miller. At the time, oh, this yeah, was a huge how deal in hip hop exposed. because a rapper's penmanship was still something rappers took pride in. Meek Mill felt like he got played. But what's worse is because of the whole scandal, all of Quentin Miller's contributions to Drake's career were brought to the spotlight including one of Drake's most beloved mixtapes by fans. If you're reading this, it's too late. And almost destroying Damn. his career entirely due to raising questions about the authenticity of practically any and all of his music that he's released. Oh, and of course, the conditions within OVO. Since, well, Quentin Miller obviously had the talent to make hits, yet still remained unknown behind the curtains at Drake's label. Regardless, the damage was already been done, and various sources began investigating deeper into alleged demanding working it's environment. It's literally like one of them Hollywood things where like, Drake is like the image you feel me like here's Drake here's the image this is the guy they want to put out and they're like oh yeah let's hire these niggas right here and they're like all right you write you write you write and you know whatever's good we're gonna grab and use and that's what they that's what they've been obviously doing or whatever instead of like promoting all these people but they're grabbing these like these artists that they're like oh they they basically doing what like Diddy did back in the day they're like oh I hear the sound I like that and like, let's grab him or whatever but they're giving the sounds to their boy, which did he did to to Biggie too? He did the same shit. It's like it's just like I'm, it's most likely something that happens more often than obviously just Drake and Diddy, but he's like taking their their shit and giving it to himself instead. But Diddy was giving it to his other artist, his main artist, which was Biggie, back back then. But he was like he stole from um damn bro. I wish I, I was good with memory, but I'm terrible. But uh. This guy that was like B.I.G. that was rapping and shit like that, he stole his his music, his sounds and shit, and gave it to Biggie. So Biggie could be B.I.G. Because like the, that kid had like, I think like the same name, or like he had the name first. But like his whole image basically copied off this kid, bro. And Diddy stole it all from him. And they're basically, and Drake's basically just doing a Diddy again, but minus the kids this time. He's just doing a Diddy with these fucking people, and he's stealing all their songs. Or I'm not, I'm not even selling their, their dividend to him, I guess, because they're ghostwriting. So they're giving it to him. But he's just ma ma boosting himself up. And we already knew all this. Like, this is all information that's been exposed for years. But it's just, like, it's crazy to think about, like, he's not the only one that has done this. He's not.
but Drake doing this to all his other artists, like Quentin Miller was like one of his best ones, his writer and everything. I don't understand why he didn't like boost them up to like be in the spotlight because I feel like they can make even more money boosting up their artists because they're your artist. Little Wayne did it to the to them to your money, so why wouldn't you do it to him? But anyway at his record label though were unsuccessful in finding any concrete evidence years later during another public Sorry, feud involving this drake point. except this time with pusha t quentin miller was asked by a fan where his relationship with drake stood at this point in time he made it clear that his ties with drake were strictly past tense never doing anything with that guy again i literally don't even care of that to become a thing we're finished he's doing him i'm doing me point blank that's it though shit dead Perhaps Damn. he was just glad he had finally escaped and wanted no other dealings with Drake after what had transpired. I mean, according to Quentin during his DJ Vlad TV interview, he apparently hadn't seen one back-end publishing check from any songs he wrote for Drake, merely a $30,000 advance when he signed, clearly much less than he deserved. But what yeah. most people don't realize Big is that time. Quentin Miller was actually signed to another organization entirely under record producer and publisher Tricky Stewart. And actually, he claimed that Drake and his label would even pay him additionally under the table for Quentin to survive and provide for his family it's about to change my life you know even though you know i was in my horrible 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 publishing situation with tricky so i i haven't i never got a publishing check off of any drake songs I, wait 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 you never got that's a insane check bro off of any drake song. no no i had to feed my family off getting paid under the table in that situation because tricky them will let me go the next artist, That's or rather insane, group, bro. is Majid Jordan. This nigga Drake got millions, probably billions, bro, and this nigga can't get a fucking a few thou wow, bro. Like, what? That makes no sense, bro. Like, I understand, like, the whole sweatshop allegation, you still in their music, all blah, 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 but, bro, you couldn't pay the niggas, bro. Like, at least give them the money, bro. You got the money. Like, you have so much money, and you couldn't give them, give them a little bit, bro. You ain't gonna lose nothing, bro. Give them the fucking money. I thought they were at least a hush money or something, but not even that, bro. How how was he getting away with that shit? A Lebanese Canadian R&B duo assigned to OVO back in 2013 to assist in the songwriting and producing for my all-time favorite Drake album, Nothing Was the Same. And funny enough, they actually compared Drake's studio sessions to a literal That's why all his albums sleeping sound in different. tents and not being able to leave. They basically put us in a studio, and it was like a studio camp almost. There were tents in there. There were like people make flying beats, in. Yeah, make, make beats. beats. Stay in the dungeon. Don't leave. Like, more you more cannot literally, leave. Literally like tense. Yeah. Literally you can't tense. tell anyone you're working on this project. We, we, Luckily, even with such conditions, Majid Jordan actually received feature credits on Hold On, We're Going Home on the album, in turn launching their career. We're making beats for like a few months, and uh, we eventually get to make Hold On. I write the, the words over a beat that's produced by this guy, um, Paul Jeffries, really talented producer, goes by 1985. He also produced Hotline Blade. And then we put it on a USB for Drake to drive home to one night. He drove home, we showed up the next day, and he attracted. it. And they're like, we love this song. You know, this is like, this is the one. And Forty's sitting there with his arms up in the studio. And he's like, we got it. We've got this. <laughs> so perhaps camping out of the studio was all worth it for them. Noel Fisher, otherwise known as Detail, pursued legal action against Drake in 2016 for essentially attempting to force him into an exclusive production contract with OVO after their collaborations on Nothing Was The Same, though Detail declined. Soon after, Drake invited him back to his house, giving off the impression that they would still work together, just not exclusively. However, according to Detail's dispute, when he arrived, Drake's bodyguard Chubbs answered the door and assaulted him allegedly on Drake's orders. The attack left Detail hospitalized for Damn. several days with severe injuries, including a broken jaw requiring multiple surgeries. Detail requested Drake cover the medical expenses, but this time he refused, forcing Detail to file a lawsuit to be compensated for his injuries. Although mysteriously, Detail failed to appear to his court hearing and consequently the lawsuit was thrown out. And Damn, he hasn't spoken bro. a word of the incident since. But speculation remains that oh, Drake and his crew no. had something to do with it, such as threatening Detail with even more injuries. Drake referenced this situation in one of his tracks released in 2019 titled War. In a way, Drake really out here bullying people, bro. Like, 
on some Disney Channel shit. He was on the grassy, bro. Confirming <laughs> that it did happen on his order. There's something to so him being short. Even when Drake isn't successful in signing Oh, yeah, he, Drake just is bullying him because he's short. That's literally all. He said he told Chubbs to beat him up because he's literally fucking probably a short guy. That's but literally it. And producers to the sweatshop, he can still ruin Drake your life. Short people. <laughs> Moji was another Toronto native rapper that had been violently thrown away once his value had been emptied by OVO. Drake referred to him and his infamous dance moves and hit record Summer 16, and even used them in the music videos for Hotline Bling and Energy. Although Drake nor OVO ever technically signed Moji, therefore, after a while, he felt he was owed some form of compensation for letting Drake run off with his iconic moves. Moji also shared some insight behind OVO seeking out new talent to write new hooks flows and bars for drake's music but similar to detail you know my memory public bad, and speaking <laughs> his truth resulted in violence moji posts pictures of his bloody and swollen face to instagram implying he was jumped on the orders of drake for speaking out against him and eventually deletes everything negative about the six gods soon after all in exchange for 500 dollars, the That's only it? compensation he ever received from the record label ever the final artist in the ovo sweatshop hey. is smiley certainly that sound like oh <laughs> That's not like Drake won that, bro. Like, he only walked away giving out $500 to the old buddy, bro. That's insane, bro. Drake, criminal, bro. <laughs> one of Drake's most questionable decisions due to Smiley's, let's say, unorthodox flows. It's trash. I just have to say it. The only reason Smiley has any sort of traction on streaming platforms is because of Drake featuring on his song Over the Top. And similar to the other Drake appearances like Look Alive with Blockboy JB, even though Drake was technically the feature, the song was basically his, especially when considering the length of his verses and choruses That's on true. the songs. And sure, Drake has posted a few pictures and Instagram stories promoting Smiley, but anyone in line, Drake mind look happy posting his that, music bro. isn't going to translate into the mainstream, and it definitely hasn't. Smiley has had not one mainstream hit in years, at least solo. So what was the point? Some fans believe that Drake is simply giving back to his city by signing Toronto natives that have a little buzz. But at the same time, this also benefits him too by maintaining his relevance and influence, keeping all the new artists under his wing. Not too different from his previous artists already locked in the OVO sweatshop, I Love McConan, or even four bats, whereby he remixes already bubbling or hot songs to demonstrate his dominance on the charts, even though these songs were already performing well without him. It's all a status yeah, play for hip hop that makes all the difference in perception. Given all the career atrocities Drake already has on his record, a few artists were smart enough to think longer term. What exactly it means to be signed to a superstar artist with literally no successful artists under his label. These artists saw past the guaranteed money behind giving up their own artistry to continue Drake's. And in some cases, the coveted Drake feature that could set them up for life. But is that really what they wanted? The Weeknd is the most listened artist in the world in 2024 on Spotify. But regardless, before his rise to extreme yeah, fame, he was a relatively Drake unknown well, Canadian R&B artist and songwriter assisting Drake with his early projects. Drake discovered his music in 2010 and had two of his songs posted on his October's very own blog. A year later, The Weeknd released his debut mixtape, House of Balloons, and started working with Drake on his upcoming album, Take Care. And while The Weeknd appeared as a feature on the songs Crew Love and The Ride, he was also credited for songwriting contributions on a few other tracks like Cameras, Shot For Me, among others. In 2013, The Weeknd told Complex, I gave up almost half of my album it's hard. I will always be thankful. If it wasn't for the light he shined on me, who knows where I'd be? And everything happens for a reason. You oh, never yeah, I know what that. I would say if this success wasn't in front of me now. And despite Drake's efforts to sign him officially to the OVO Sound record label after Take Care's momentum, The Weeknd had different arrangements. He used the buzz from his Drake collabs to partner with Republic Records and create his own imprint, XO, a competing Damn. force to OVO in which he could sign his own artist. Soon after the deal went public, Drake responded on Twitter, you won't get away with just a thank you. You owe me a favor. He felt Damn. betrayed beat at his own game he gave the spotlight to an upcoming artist but couldn't lock them into a deal to bear the fruit he had planted so i understand his frustration but on the other hand the weekend was responsible for a large proportion of arguably one of drake's most iconic projects of all time seems like a fair trade to me just because drake was early to discover the weekend's talents doesn't mean he owns him i mean think about how limited he could have been if he was signed to another artist they compete for the same number of billboard hits selling out arena tour stops worldwide the weekend is one of the most successful artists ever. 
That's he just true. really came to me at one point, came to all of us and was like, look, like I, I don't want to sign under another artist because I feel like I could be just as big or bigger. And looking back, not signing to OVO was probably one of the best decisions he has ever made in his entire career. And speaking of hopping yeah, on trends, Ice Spice turned out to be another Drake blunder. And while no evidence exists that Drake wanted to actually sign her to OVO, he was definitely impressed with her recent rise to fame, publicly following and DMing her that he messed with her music. In fact, he also flew her out to his OVO fest in Toronto. If you ask me, the sight of Ice Spice had Drake motivated, whether he just wanted to hit or he just <laughs> wanted her to become the next OVO signee. But something definitely certainly did not hit, go bro. his way. For after nothing business or personal resulted from their time together, Drake unfollowed her. And did we really think either of those two options would have ended well? As we can already see. Hey, look, this is what happened, bro. The boy wanted to hit. He flew her out. She was expecting something else. She was expecting business. You feel me? He was like, nah, you know about that. I'm champagne poppy. Like, there's that champagne. You feel me? Like, and she was like, nah. And he's like, oh, okay, cool. Flew her ass back out afterwards. She went home, unfollow. Boom. That's, that's a story, bro. It's simple. Ain't nothing crazy. It's just two people just didn't connect. <laughs> And he was mad. He was hurt, bro. Cause it ain't, ain't nobody saying no to the boy. You feel me? Like, ain't nobody saying no that. For all the dogs, ain't nobody saying no. You feel me? But no, she said no, and he was like, unfollow. Like, he was, you know, he was just upset, bro. That's that's all it was, bro. She's doing just all right on her own. With he wasn't, he wasn't munching yet. enough, I also need to give bro. credit to Ice Spice's team that have protected her from all controversy and have allowed her to make all the right moves in the industry. After all, they were smart enough to refuse whatever Drake uh, may have good, offered. Bro. Bryson Taylor Welcome seemingly back. blew up out of nowhere with his SoundCloud hit, Don't, that eventually made its way onto every hip-hop, R&B, and pop radio station. Expectedly, Drake offered him a record deal. But Bryson Tiller turned it down. Hey, he was conflicted on quite possibly the biggest decision of his entire life. Does he sign to Drake to potentially be overshadowed or simply because OVO lacks the infrastructure to support any artists other than Drake? I mean, Bryson Tiller had already signed to two independent labels before and neither of them worked out. But signing to RCA Records, he would have had a whole team. He talked to 40 about it. Even 40 was like, this is not a bad deal from RCA, so we just did it. Bryson Tiller decided to take his odds as a solo artist without the help of Drake. And whether or not his career has panned out greater in comparison to if he had signed OVO, at least he's working for himself. Solid. Most recently, Bryson Tiller has had a top 20 hit with his solo song, Whatever She Wants and he did it all on his own. For an all likelihood, go. he would have been in the studio writing songs for Drake's last few projects like the rest of them. Popcon is a Jamaican singer who featured on Drake's Controller. It was the first dance hall artist signed to OVO. Drake hopped on the entire dance hall trend due to Popcon's growing buzz. Popcon got multiple career boosting features from Drake, but he didn't feel like he was as supported on his own endeavors and career. In fact, his last album under OVO, Great Is He, debuted at a lower rank in sales than his previous four studio projects despite featuring Drake. Not to mention the incident with Wiley, a UK artist attempting to clear features for a PopCon and Nicki Minaj collab, but was unsuccessful due to issues with the label. Wiley then calls out Damn. OVO Sound on behalf of PopCon on Twitter. Don't ever sign to OVO Sound. They give you shit record deals and you're only there to help Drake with songs to keep him up and you down. Set up for you to fail. Hey, supposing the boy. Up, tagging PopCon. They said they won't clear your verse because you ain't giving them any music for your own project. In early 20. 2023, PopCon then left OVO, telling Crack Magazine, the label can be weird sometimes. I love the label, but I don't like them. I'll be independent soon. PopCon may have learned his lesson. The signing under another artist, no matter who it is, may not be the best option, as what worked for them may not work for their artists. He wanted to utilize Drake's platform to launch the entire genre of dance hall into the mainstream, and it definitely worked. However, only for Drake's songs. So all that PopCon really amounted yeah, to under true. OVO <laughs> was yet another stepping stone for Drake to maintain his status as the biggest rapper in the world, capitalizing from various cultures by commercializing them. It wouldn't be the first time Drake hopped on a trending sound and received all the credit for making Hell it. Hell not, popular. ain't the first time. In March time. 2024, Four Bats reportedly signed a distribution deal for his new EP with Drake. Drake just did a remix of his hit song, Act 2, Data 8. And just like some other OVO signees, Four Bats' song was already viral in his own right due to the juxtaposition between his street appearance and high-pitched R&B vocals. Yet again, this caused fans to wonder why artists keep letting Drake get away with hopping on the trends they have created when we've already seen all of OVO's other victims. Four Bats allegedly- but The reason why they're doing that, bro, is simple. It's like, they got they got the attention all on their own. They did great like that, but then Drake is like probably one of the first ones to hit him up once they hit that M the first time. 
They probably get one mil, and he's probably already typing in the inbox. Like, he's probably like, oh, shit, I gotta jump on the song. Like, he's probably already trying to do that. And then he goes and tells the artist, like, hey, I'll jump on this feature with, or on the song, you know, because I'm Drake or whatever. I'm, I'm hearing the sound. I like that song. Just like Ice Spice, you know what I mean? It's the same shit. He told her, I like the song. I'm trying to fly you out. It's different for, like, four bats. And he's just like, oh, hey, I like your song. Let me jump on it. That's pretty much it. Four bats probably did this shit. Like, I wouldn't say it's for free, but I don't know. Maybe it is for free. Like, obviously, a Drake feature would be great when you're unknown. And obviously, he's making himself known by having the song blow up. That was cool. That's great. But having Drake alone on that song would be really good for your career. And also having that backlog, like, oh, I had Drake in the song with me. Like, an immediate fucking, like, oh, and now he got my attention. Like, so it, I understand what they're doing. They're just using, like, they're trying to use Drake, but Drake is using them. So is he really wrong? It's like, in reality, like, because they didn't have, like, he is wrong, but he is the one actually going for it. So technically, he is the one wrong. He actually does hit them up, usually. Not like four bats hit up Drake or nothing. He hit four bats up. So technically, Drake is the wrong one, because he's trying to come about them for something. Trying to basically try to squeeze out a favor from them because he's like oh i jumped on your song for you so he's trying to squeeze out a favor from four bats or something you know what i mean or the weekend or whoever else he'd, he's trying to enhance his career from it, it is funny because he really does hop on the viral trend in songs like it, it is funny as hell it's like you really sit, sit back and think about it this shit is shady shady and it's so funny like it's it's literally so funny it's been here the whole time and no one really like talks about it it's crazy only sign a distribution deal for one ep so if the partnership isn't the right Year fit or the ep doesn't stream like they're hoping it will they can always part ways as of now if one looks at the album's metadata for his newest project there is no ovo sound listed as a distributor though drake's remix is also not on the album instead there is the act three remix with kanye drake and kendrick's beef also took a lot of the spotlight away from his debut studio project in which he tweeted yo kendrick lamar i just dropped my tape can i get 24 hours at least now obviously this isn't entirely Drake's fault, but still it's just something to note. Is the entire label evil and maliciously signing artists for the So Drake dropped one of the uh the disses or whatever during the <laughs> I do remember that. Four Rest did I remember he did tweet that shit out saying something about the he was trying to drop the album. But yeah, he did like immediately kinda like lose buzz. Like has it don't get me wrong, his music's still like it's still good. You feel me? Like Four Rest still has good music, but he did lose his buzz or whatever because Drake uh I guess that whole Drake shit didn't like pan out or whatever, like like Buddy was saying. But yeah, I noticed his buzz did die down. Like all the songs don't have like you know a billion views all the time anymore. Like right away, like when he dropped it, it wasn't just a, a like four million already. It was like way lower than that, surprisingly. But I think he just lost that uh that shit he had with Drake and that kind of killed it. And then on top of that, Drake dropping that right on top like of his new album drop, that shit didn't help at all. That's sole purpose of sustaining Drake's career? Or does that just end up happening for various reasons? Because what it looks like is every artist who signs to the label ends up never amounting to much under their own name. And as soon as Drake has siphoned all the influence he can take from new artists out of Toronto to perpetuate his next leg of his career, you never hear from them again. If that's actually the case, then Drake and 40 are evil geniuses, especially when they have easy bait for upcoming artists idea. of the prize Drake feature that could skyrocket their career with only one song. And better yet, many of the times Drake does doesn't even fulfill this promise. I mean, if they made a hit record, why wouldn't he just take it for himself rather than bog down the potential from featuring on an unknown artist track? Oh, and if you call out the operation publicly, Drake will send out his minions. It all seems like a trap. Noisy stated, it's looking like the dream they're selling is sexy art direction and clutch credits on the boss's album. OVO Sound is excellent at the business of making Drake albums, but not yet the no-brainer star-making force up north it could be, possibly because the tightest songs get run up the pipeline and placed at the feet of the six god. But what if, yep. on the other <laughs> hand, OVO is actually trying to promote their artist careers, but just suck at it? After all, Drake emerged as the top rapper over a decade ago and was launched into the scene by Lil Wayne, the highest-selling rapper at the time. Now, yes, Drake is currently in the same situation as Lil Wayne now, spotlighting new artists as the top dog. But to be fair, the music industry has changed. Cosigns are less effective due to multiple reasons. For one, social media and streaming platforms are continually increasing the competition for artists and creators as the barrier to entry of uploading music online becomes easier and easier. But more importantly, social media has democratized sharing of music. Any regular citizen can grow a following or simply just share what type of music they're listening to, That's in true. turn, influencing others. No longer are massive media publishers 
managers and radio stations the gatekeepers to upcoming talent and therefore drake or any large artist cosign for that matter isn't really worth as much as it once was when information was more centralized and let's not forget that drake is still just an artist yes ovo is his brand but he has his own career to worry about especially in recent times and the employees of the label in addition to the uh, artists are the Kendrick ones who are supposed to utilize his brand in order to push their own career he can't do everything at the same time though given it is his brand it is his responsibility to hire the correct people to be able to handle new artists and their development Facts. as for the accusations of exploiting his artists to make him hit songs rather than let them succeed i could go either way it is a safer bet to funnel all the hit songs to drake for nearly guaranteed success but longevity wise which i think drake is truly after to prove he's the best artist on the planet and can put on any artist he wants to because he is just that influential that wouldn't make sense drake has enough hits and he's pushing 40 years old at this point already discussing slowing down and or retirement at this stage in his career i believe his goals all the more align with letting his artists have their own hits but perhaps this was his strategy early on regardless baka explains his perspective on the matter pundits people who talk online about music say is that they try to say oh ovo if you end up signing with ovo you end up giving your best shit to drake do you think that there's any truth to that do you think nah. you're seeing it from a different perspective because you weren't like hired as a songwriter or a producer <laughs> or something? Nah, I just know him as an individual, you know? He's not gonna, especially if a man's like, okay, so let me put myself in the, in the situation then. I make a hit song mm. and he knows it's a hit song for me. He's not gonna come and be like, yo, I need that song. He's not gonna do that. Mm. I a hundred percent I know this. and I've never even heard of him doing anything like that. So what you, right. that's what he does. What do you My mean? My personal take on is it on it is I don't know him to be like that. Right. You know, he wants his artists to thrive and to, and to flourish and to be great. He wants that. Uh -huh. Like everybody at OBO wants that. And what's crazy though is that to a lot of people who maybe have a less mature perspective, they would say, "Well, why didn't he hop on your song when it was blowing up?" But I think the reality is is that. Yeah, that would have made the song bigger, but he probably wouldn't have been doing you any favors in the long run because getting under that massive microscope that mm -hmm. quickly is, is sometimes we've seen a lot of people whose careers couldn't handle the weight exactly. of the Drake feature. Exactly. In conclusion, it is a given fact that if you're an artist as big as Drake, mm -hmm. you are bound to run. I just like can't agree with that. Like maybe they're not using it as like a uh, a thing to hold against them. Maybe having a Drake feature is bad because it does like. Maybe it's like, oh, now that's your best work, and now you're kind of stuck. You know what I mean? Like, maybe that's what it is. Uh, that does make sense, though. It makes a lot of damn sense. I can't even lie. That actually does add up. Maybe it's not so bad, you feel me? Maybe it's actually a good thing that he's not jumping on every feature. But I feel like they should be promoting them. Shit like that. I mean, what, what are they signed for? You know what I mean? It's like you should promote them. You should pay them, for one. Pay them. Do not do that to people. That's fucked up to get to that position drake used many artists as writers and producers to drop as many hits as possible throughout his career for this reason ovo can be seen as a sweatshop however is it even fair to compare any ovo signees to drake due to his impossibly large success we have to remember record labels like ovo are a business and will invest in the most valuable asset they have in this case that is drake why would they risk money on artists that could fail when That's whatever true. song drake makes is guaranteed millions of streams <laughs> without much marketing maybe the ovo label is not really a label at all but just a springboard to boost drake's career since he has been so successful the majority of people would agree that drake that mistreated too. the artist on his label and this is a testimony to drake's character that has heavily been questioned in recent times during his beef with kendrick lamar future metro Boomin, and damn near the entire industry so not only drake but also ovo sound as a label may need to change their tactics as they very well may have an army of sweatshop prisoners ready to expose any and everything going on behind the show oh, i guarantee they do they probably do that hella people ready to like pop out and be like oh yeah drake did this because every time he burned somebody they pretty much came out and said something but then they got burned right back that's so fucked up but that was the prisoners of drake's ovo sweatshop that was that was pretty good